Welcome back to Space Engineers, and I've just come back from a mining trip for silicon. Uh, silicon, if you remember, <laughs> I ran out of uh, ingredients to make our solar panel arrangement down there, and that is actually still working, although it sometimes has a little bit of interesting fun down there, but it is working, I promise. Um, and I don't have any silicon on this roid, so I had to go and find one. There's one about 12 kilometers that way, right there. And uh, if we just have a look on my GPS, you'll see there's a whole bunch, all the blue ones are the, are the asteroids, a whole bunch of ones with iron, um, gold even, nickel, ice, silver even. Only one so far with silicon and none so far with magnesium. So if we want ammo, magnesium is the one we're going to go for. So I thought, well, we've got and got some of that. That should get processed by the refinery at some point. Although I think we're going to need to set up our refineries now, uh, all our new refineries, I should say. Yeah, this is nearly full and there should be a second can, uh, can somewhere and that probably will be nearly full as well. So silicon, we're processing uranium here as well. So if we just reorder this for a second, um, platinum, let's just put some silver next up and we'll let it continue processing that. So I've started to put in our infrastructure for where we're going to put our refineries. And I've put a couple of spaces behind them. One space will be needed for the modules. But the main thing for, at least for me, is that I line up the sort of top um, hatches, which I think is here, with that. Because I think what I'm going to do is reroute this entirely and have it so that there is a junction and we'll just yeah I can probably put it down so <clears throat> if you can imagine one junction going that way a conveyor junction going this way and then another directional junction going that way and then the first slot is of course here so we can just put uh, junctions or whatever we want to over the rest so then all we have to do is supply the pipe into the bottom of this or, or the top even but the bottom of this would take it down here somewhere and we've not we're not too far away from that particular um conveyor so you see there's a conveyor underneath that we built last episode so we can run things underneath quite comfortably and that does mean we can even think about just basically removing this dock from this side of uh, the base over to here. So we've got our arc furnaces and I'm going to be building the refineries. And once it comes finish, or once it finishes from the refinery and doesn't much matter where we get that out of there, uh, we're going to want to put it into a another. Now, am I going to want another, another large canister here rather than this. That's a good point because that is a large canister that just basically serves to have, act as a buffer for our dock. And that means that um, things won't accidentally head into, well, it doesn't matter that it's into the top, but things won't head straight into the assemblers. It'll hit that first. So I think we may want to not have that. I think, I think that, that that part's fine, but I think we're going to need to put another another canister somewhere another cargo can even and I'd really like to do the same height as that one but that means moving the refineries down one uh, or two even um, it'd be probably down two if I want any space between them so I don't really want to do that I think uh, we got space to do it, but I don't really want to do that. So I may well have to move that one up at some point. No harm either way. So in that case, we just want to make sure we have a large cargo can. So let's get a cargo can, a large one, and put you there. And uh, yeah, we're going to want a connector of some kind. So let's just put a conveyor block in there for now. And then we'll put the cargo can on top. Yeah, so you can see it's obviously huge, but it's only the same width as the refineries. It's just going to be offset. That is also going to annoy me. <laughs> yeah, I um, hmm. there's no real way of avoiding it. We unfortunately these aren't three by three. Otherwise, we, we'd have a problem. So that will have to do. 
Uh, unfortunately, I don't think we can make it symmetric in any way. No, it would just have to sit behind them or something if we didn't do it there. So it'll be fine here. And we'll move this one up because, again, it's just a buffer. So it will be empty a lot of the time. And we'll move it up to there, which means that will go directly over to this side if we want it to. So if we're going to... Um, if we're going to do that, we can either go in this side or into that junction block and then remove all the rest of this over the top. That works fine. So we're going to feed our ferrous stuff into this one, our non ferrous stuff into this one, which is probably going to be further up once I've finished with it. And then for out of there, once they're all done, I think there's a port right here, although we may not want to go for that specific port in case we want more refineries. So again, um, we should be able to feed out of the bottom somewhere if we need to but into some assemblers so if we look at some assemblers on the other hand um let's just put you there yep meteor storm inbound so you'll see there's a few different sides on an assembler um obviously there's the large connector side which is kind of useful and then the other sides are for modules so we're going to make sure that wherever we put these and i'm probably going to leave it a room for an extra refinery if i want one or two so that takes us to there space and then our first assembler should be here then so if we rotate it up and around we need to leave room for modules and the modules will go either side if it's this way so i think in comparison to the refineries i think i'm actually gonna put these front to back so i'm gonna have them like this with the modules going on either side like that Okay, and then that we can obviously put more in there. So I can get to the left and right side. I may well have to put a gap or something like that, but that, that's four assemblers to start off with. Uh, the alternative, well, no, we can put it the other way. Let's, yeah, let's put them the other way. Yeah, so we'll just put them so they are lined up along this uh, dock. Let's get this the right way up. That's fine. So wherever we wanted them. So we wanted room for two more for refineries if we need them. So that's one, two, gap. And then uh, we're going to have to leave space if we're going to put them this way. Um, we're going to have to move it one in. There we go. So four... And then in front of it and behind of it, we can put modules if we want to, like speed. You'll see I've already put a floor out to here. And that will take us sort of a whole production system, potentially, uh, that will be going on. And from there, we're going to then want the... Um, we're then going to want our stuff. Was Is there a, a large on the top there? So if it's that way up... Hopefully there's a large one on the top. There is. Good. So maybe we should put another uh, junction block. So let's assume, assume we're going to have five of these. So junction block, and then we want a large cargo can on top of that as well. So large cargo can. Just we may as well just standardize on them. It, it shouldn't really need much more. So we've got a large cargo can over here. And of course that one... Um, We'll have to put junctions uh, or maybe to connect through. I can't remember where the, the ports are now. But this one will contain um, our components. And if this is going to contain our components, then we might want to think about some sort. And this, these will be connected without going through this vertical space. So we might want to think about some kind of dock around about here. Well, at least a temporary dock. Uh, so we'll just one, two, three right turn and then that seems a reasonable place then to just put a connector and we'll use this as our dock for our welding ship because we're going to need one and having an easily accessible place to load up with components seems like a relatively good idea uh what we um, we may have to move that up by one just to make sure it pulls all the components and nothing else upwards yeah, let's just do that. Let's just go by one. Um, we're going to want... Is that a junction? There's a junction. I'm going to want a directional. 
There we go. Then we can put the uh, cargo can. Then I've overwritten. <laughs> I've overwritten the conveyor. Oh well. Can never do it perfectly all the time. Oh, ruin some of the time in my case. <laughs> let's uh, let's get one, two, three. Uh, was that about where I put it last time? Yeah, that's about right. And then just turn a right angle and straight into a connector. Okay, so now all the components will be forced up into this cargo can. We'll be able to access them from this docking port where we'll have a mining ship. So, cue lots and lots of welding, I guess. We could build a welding ship, but I don't want to build a welding ship until we've got this up and running because... We sort of need that welding ship then to complete the rest of our sort of hangar area. So um, I, I will live with it for now. Uh, we're going to probably want to increase the size of that gravity generator area at some point as well, or just move it more likely. Uh, what we can probably do is put it underneath here in the middle of the floor somewhere, and then it will extend outwards, uh, being the most power efficient rather than off in a corner over there. So that should do the job. All right. Back in a... A short while for you. Okay, so our refineries are pretty much done. Did I complete that last one? Yeah, I did. Good. And uh, I did put another cargo can. I'll come back to that in a second. So we're going to rearrange this whole system of ductwork that we've got going here, our conveyors. Um, what I've got here is a whitelist set of ores. So anything, oh, we're going to try and use one spine for everything. I do I did want to thank people who were saying, yeah, you don't need to worry about, you know, getting things inputs and outputs and stuff like that. Um, yeah, we'll use a common spine for everything and it, it will find its own way through the uh, through the network. Um, more like a, uh, a central hub to spoke network rather than, you know, loops and stuff like that. So uh, this one's set to whitelist ores. This one's set to whitelist uh, cobalt, nickel, and iron. This one's uh, this one's set to blacklist the same. And because whitelist and blacklist, they won't fight each other for the same things, all we need to make sure is you have something here that just in makes sure that only ores go this way. Uh, otherwise, um, if you blacklist something, it will try and pull everything else. <laughs> we don't want it to pull everything else. So we've then got two inputs into our arc furnaces and our refineries. We've got to route the output of that. But the output of that, I'm going to go and put into here, which is going to be, uh, I just need some interior plates. I won't take very long. Uh, it's just going to be a buffer for uh, ingots. So what, we'll, what we should be able to do, uh, if I've got enough interior plate though, that is, uh, is to, Let's just make some more interior plate. I'm always needing it. Is to basically say ingots and have a um, you know a, a conveyor sorter going to this. And in fact, we can probably put it on the um, on the input here. That just saves various problems. So let's just switch that up. There we go. I'm going to need some bits and pieces, but you get the idea. This will just say whitelist ingots drain all. And then we'll connect it to, uh, that's a shame. <laughs> Let's connect it to this side then. Uh, I think because we've got this, I think we can lose that now. I think we can just replace that with a junction because these should pull, I think. If not, we can always put it back, but I think they should just pull just fine. We'll remove this. And then all we need to do, I think, is connect this block and that block and then we can just have a regular duct going this way. Um, we may want to send it over the top as well um, because we're going to, well, no, no, it's fine. If all the ingots have to go this way, then they're going to pass through this buffer, which means that we can pull them out of this side and straight into um, this or indeed, um, well, yes, that's fine. They should pass through just fine, I would have thought. And then we'll have a whole whole team of assemblers able to do work, which then will output get pulled by this, which is set to components whitelist, I imagine. I hope I did. Components whitelist, yep, drain all, which will push it all into this container, which will be then accessible by this connector. I think you can get it here manually if you want stuff for the base, or indeed you can just dock a ship to pick up components. So that's going to be our welding setup. What we might I might actually do is face that up eventually rather than out just so that we have this this entire line here. You can see 
is going on. It's going to be the, the, the edge of a wall of this side of the hangar. So we may well want it pointing up. Now, a welding ship doesn't generally be, it doesn't, isn't generally very large. In fact, because of just the, the nature and the sheer radius of welders, something like this with, um, ooh, actually, could we re, no, nah, it's got, yeah, it's got the hydrogen tanks. I was, I was gonna just saw these off the front and put a welder on. Technically you could, I suppose, but it's quite a big ship for a welder that's just going to be moving around in the base. Remember, it's not carrying many megatons of ore around everywhere, so something quite small will be just fine. And you can even start with just a single welder on the front instead of just like this, directly in front of the, the cockpit. That does quite well in the early game. Uh, I do have to put another light up there just so that uh, everything is lit up a little bit. So I'm just going to finish off with the rest of that conveyor. I uh, just wanted to explain it before. I actually put everything in just so that you can see what's going on when it's in. And one quick addendum there, I think I've actually got to be careful around here because I can't actually connect these two up. Because if I do, these refiners will happily pull from this junction, which is pulling from uh, ferrous. Now that doesn't mind, I don't mind it happening to do that if a non-ferrous is actually empty, but uh, because of that, what I may well do is just switch this round just to say, um, to push everything this way, we'll just have two separate conveyor sorters. One coming from here or something like that, and one coming from, uh, well, that's a good question, where? But yeah, the idea from these machines anyway, from these refineries, and then we'll push them both towards this container that way. And that should work, hopefully. <laughs> Back in a second. Okay, and lastly, we can pull uh, everything out of back out of here if we just put in a junk well not a junction we shouldn't need one is that close enough yes that's right and then we can put it that way and that should complete everything now one really actually good advantage uh, of this I've got a couple of junctions a uh, uh, couple of sorters here I should say these are both pulling ingots, pushing ingots only, I should, well, pulling ingots and then pushing them straight out of each of the banks, or out of the banks of arc furnaces, out of the banks of refineries. And they're both going into this conveyor here. Now, behind here, we've got, this is the conveyor coming out of our new refineries, and it's going into this common junction box, which will only receive ingots from that direction and ingots from this direction. But this is short, it's connected to this, well it's not connected to this yet, but it's connected, It's nearly connected to this conveyor tube. And that goes all the way to our other cargo canister all the way on the side of the base. So if I connect this up to here, because this only pulls ingots, what it should actually do, if I make sure I don't put a junction in here anywhere, is pull the, uh, the metal back from the other side of the base that's just really tying everything up. So interior plates, small steel tubes, and that's about it. Uh, let's just put the final piece in. Yeah, we need more interior plates. Okay, let's just go and get those. And let's see if this works. So interior plates, small steel tubes. Um, interior plates I've got. Small steel tubes I mean to make a couple of a hundred, as usual. Let's just let this pile up a little bit and grab those. And I guess we should probably make some construction components because I'm short on those as well. And of course it'll be our other assemblers that are making this soon enough. We can disassemble this side and I can put a fifth assembler over there once we're ready to do that. So let's just pop in over here and hopefully I've got enough. Uh, oh, just outside the gravity field. <laughs> Still outside the gravity field. Uh, let me just turn on my jetpack so that I can get the right way up. There we go. Okay, you're connected. So I just need construction components now. And that should be it. Uh, which I think I put on build, didn't I? I think I did. Should be enough. And we'll go in over the top. 
and just connect to here. Everything's green. Okay, let's see if this is starting to pull in ingots from the other side of the base. Looks very much like it, doesn't it? We've got uh, lots and lots of iron piling up. So, we can head back over here and see if this cargo can is emptying. It is! Good! So that's pulling everything from this side all the way over to the other side, which I'm very happy about. That means everything is working. And then uh, everything's coming into here, that's good. So then the only thing I need to complete is going to be these. And then we should be able to request things from wherever to be built, except that it'll go that way. But that's perfectly fine. Motors, small steel tubes and construction components. Okay, they're all built, so we should now be able to take this bit apart. And we can take this apart. Part, although that might cause some issues unless I empty it first. Uh, let's just... Can I get... I, I can't get 40 ks for the fire. Uh, I should be able to move it into this cargo can though, and then that will then uh, hopefully stop things. So let's just move it back into here. And that should get pulled back into the system, I'm hopeful. Uh, yeah, that's still gone. So we can take that apart now. Okay, that's working well. Um, we haven't needed any connectivity for anything else, do we? No, that's cargo can should not be needed anymore. We just need a regular cable between a regular pipe between the two. Uh, so that will go back in. We'll restore it later. Um, let's just pick up that. There we go. And we can put some more stuff back in. There we go. Uh, we can probably get rid of the refinery now as well, but I'll leave it alone for the moment. Uh, we can put the assembler back in over at the end here if you want to, but uh, again, we can leave that alone for the moment. Um, that means, however, now when I request stuff, it should be getting built by something on the other side of the base. So, if we go in here, let's go to our control panel first of all, and go to our assemblers. So there's four of them. And I'll put them in cooperative mode. And then we can go to production, and say I want construction components. Okay, so they've started making. Let me actually just uh, add a few more hundred and let's go and make sure that they're all actually working. We do need to put speed modules in them of course so that is... In fact I didn't need to run over here did I? I could just connect check check remotely. Go to inventory and then go to um, assembler. They are not currently working cooperatively so uh, that's going to be an interesting one. We can just connect them all. Hello. Need to go and connect the energy. Uh, connect the energy. Uh, go and recharge and then connect probably underneath. Uh, we can put junctions beneath them all, I think. We can just make sure they're not disconnected from anything first by just, uh, you know, putting blocks in here. And that should do the job. We technically could just connect them at the top. Uh, what are you set to at the moment? You're set to components only. So, yeah, we could just connect them at the top. That's easier. And then I guess we can just pull across the top and into there. And we need to put some junctions in. So if I just run the two that by put in seven. Yeah, interior plate. Okay. I'll put those junctions in. We'll come back. And this is the part where I always get wrong. It, it happens every time <clears throat> just because I don't play the game continually. Maybe you guys can help. Um, I, I always have problems enabling cooperative mode, and it always happens the same way. <laughs> if I go in here, um, it's, uh, if I remember rightly, it's not the control panel that you want to enable things. So if I enable this cooperative mode on, but if I remember correctly, that isn't something that we just don't actually want to use, if I remember correctly. There's, see, this one's in cooperative mode. That one isn't. That one isn't, and that one isn't. If I set that one up, change back, you'll see this has gone back to off. 
And if I change this off and then go back, it's back to on. So it's being controlled from in here, it looks like. So we've got this production queue going. And I've set cooperative mode in here. So if we set it off, we can go back to our control panel and you'll see that uh, the assemblers now have cooperative mode off. Okay. Now, the problem is that it doesn't work. <laughs> if I change this to the cooperative mode, and let's say um, I want to just have 400 construction components, if I go across to here and go across to assemblers, uh, why can't I see any more? Oh, hide empty. That's why. Yeah. So none of the rest are actually working at all. So maybe it's only... Let's if I just put a couple of computers. Will any of them pick up? Nope. None of them will pick up. Maybe I'm missing something obvious, but we have conveyor junctions connecting them all together. There is a port underneath them. So if I just go there, you'll see there is a port there for them to be connected into the conveyor network. Uh, the only thing I can think of is that we have to feed them in again back into just one and avoid the conveyor network. That seem, would seem very, very odd. I mean, I'll try it, but there is port connecting them through all the way along. So, you know, there's no, there's no, <laughs> there shouldn't be any block to this whatsoever, except it just doesn't work. And it it's almost certainly something simple that I just forget every game. Um, and I, I just don't know. So, um, if I share, change this, change the ownership back and then share with all, make sure that's all set up. Um, assembling is going on. See, still no activity yet. They're all connected to each other. Um, yeah, I'm sort of out of ideas. We certainly aren't short of materials. Let's put it that way. We've got a million iron. And that's pulled some uranium. That's something we may have to watch out for. We don't want uranium to go this way. That, that might require some special treatment um, to get it over to the reactor. Or maybe rebuild the reactor over here or something and have it pull from the back. Something along those lines. That seems relatively fine. Uh, so again, yes, if anyone knows the exact solution to this, do let me know in the comments. Again, it's probably something really, really stupid. Uh, usually is with these situations, but we should be able to have them all assembling simultaneously <clears throat> and um, they all should be connected to theirs. So, yes, not quite sure what's going on there. Anyway, uh, the rest of this is now pretty much ready to disassemble. So we've got the refinery. Um, and let's just take a look at the refinery. Uh, this has got ores in it, so maybe we shouldn't do this just yet. But I can certainly... Uh, where are we going to put the main dock? That's an interesting question. Because our welding dock is going to be there. We could put it out here, but it's a little bit unprotected this far out. We might want to put doors in later. So, uh, main dock might be do well on the floor. Possibly. Because then all we need to do is feed a conveyor into that block. And that means I may have to worry about, about this. This is only going to pull ingots out of here. So this is connected to the spine of the network. So we can put our dock underneath and into the bottom of that. And then straight up, I think. Yeah, straight up and into here. And that should solve that problem. Uh, I'll do that off camera between the episodes, but this is all going to come out now. Uh, there's no there's no need to have any of this. We don't need any of this conveyor because we don't need anything in this, this refinery. What we might actually do is pull backwards all the ores out, back out of this refinery. But you get the idea. Um, and then all that should be left, I think, is just our H2O2, our gravity generator, and our med station. And that should be pretty clean on that side then. We'll we'll figure out where to move those to later. I think what we'll want is um, the ice being pulled over to this automatically or something. And maybe we'll have it on that wall or something along those lines, along with a med station and uh, other bits and pieces. So, 
that's pretty much it for this episode, I think. We've got quite a lot done. It should all be uh, pretty straightforward, I would have thought, as far as how it will all work once we figure out how to do that. I mean, don't get me wrong, it works now. In fact, do do this. does the stuff get... I think it gets removed, so... Things like that. Yeah, it is being removed, so it's definitely uh, it's definitely working. Unless that's is that drain all? Yeah, this is only components though, so it shouldn't be pulling anything away from these. Anyway, bit of a puzzle. I'll see you next episode for some uh, probably the finished part of this, which is just to show you. After all, this is deconstructed. We'll have a dock in the floor by then, and um, yeah, we'll finish off. Probably start building our welding ship next episode. Well, if you've enjoyed the episode, feel free to like, subscribe, share, etc. as normal. Tell me what I did wrong right there. And uh, we'll see you next time. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.